Hello, and welcome to this video on installing ESRI's product ArcGIS Pro, and today we're going to install version 2.1. So first, how do you get to the installation files? First, open File Explorer, and if you're in Public Works, your F drive will already be connected to PW4 server. But if you work in the city center, perhaps you don't have a drive letter that goes directly to PW4 server. So here's what you'll do in, in any case. Click in the address bar, make sure that all the text is highlighted, and just begin to type the following. Backslash backslash, remember that backslash is lean to the left, PW4 server, backslash SYS for system, backslash data proc, backslash apps, backslash, and then you can hit enter. From here you can just browse. So we are going to install an ArcGIS product and we're going to Pro 2.1 install. If you see other folders then that's good. And we're going to start with this exe right here. When you double click on it, what it wants to know is where you want to extract the installation files. And it will default to your documents folder. Now, I have a personal preference not to store installation files in my documents folder because in my belief, documents should be for documents, just as pictures are for pictures and, and uh, movies for movies. But, uh, so I will change that in the dialog that's going to be coming up soon. Alright, so here it is assuming that we want it in the documents folder. I usually highlight the letters from C to T because downloads can just be typed there. I don't know, stupid shortcut I guess. but And then you'll press next. Now I've already extracted these files to my hard drive so now I just need to go to that directory. So here I am in downloads in ArcGIS Pro 2.1 Pro. I'm going to double click on that file. It strongly recommends that I get out of other software, so I've closed things like the Orem toolbar, Outlook, and Word. Um, I've closed my browser. What I have not closed is the software that I'm using to record this, because otherwise, how would I do it? So uh, I'll click on Next. I'm going to agree to the master agreement, and I'm going to install it for anyone who uses this computer. I take the default path. Uh, one minor note thing you might notice is that it's not going to install to C program files x86 because this is not a 32-bit program like ArcJS Desktop is. This is a 64-bit program. So we're going to click Next. Um, I choose to participate in the ESRI User Experience Improvement Program. What that means really is that when the product crashes um, I get a, a box that asks for my email address and it'll say what were you doing at the time it crashed and I'll give as accurate a description as I can. This goes into ESRI's logs and if they get enough of them about a certain topic then they'll, de they'll be able to debug that feature a lot better. But that'll only happen if you participate in the user experience improvement program. Uh, so that was the user account control popping up and asking me if I really want to install the software and I clicked yes. If this installation takes a long time, I'm going to be clipping out the parts that are just boring to watch. So you might see my progress bar advance really far when yours is crawling, and that's because of the magic of video editing. All right. The installation is completed, and with this box checked, I can run ArcGIS Pro now. Now this might be a bad time to mention this fact, but you can have ArcGIS Desktop, otherwise known as ArcMap and Arc Catalog. you can have those installed and ArcGIS Pro installed at the same time, and they, they will be different versions. At the time that I'm running this, I've got ArcGIS Desktop 10.6 installed, and here I am installing ArcGIS Pro 2.1, and that's totally fine. Now I'm not going to choose to run ArcGIS Pro now and I'll tell you why. Because in the same folder as um, as the 2.1 install back here on the PW4 server, 
there is this file here which is a service pack. Um, 2.1 is the version but 3 is the service pack. So they've already released service packs 1 and 2. And 3 should be conclusive or I should say inclusive meaning I don't have to install three service packs, I should just install one, which would include the other two. Let's hope and cross our fingers, shall we? Update. Yes, I want to allow this app to make changes to my device. All right. So at the end of that, it's also going to ask me to run ArcGIS Pro, and with that I'm going to say finish. And let's see how it looks, shall we? Okay, over on my other screen popped this dialog, so I'm going to drag it over. All right, we deal with a lot of usernames and passwords, don't we? So what username and password is this asking for? ESRI has this concept of named user licenses. It's not quite related to single-use licenses for desktop, and it's pretty much related to ArcGIS.com. So any employee who wants one will be able to get a, uh, a named user license and the username may not, will not likely look like your Active Directory name. I created my username, man, what was it, 15 or more years ago? And mine is the word underscore. I'm going to put in my super secret password and sign in. I could also choose to sign in automatically and I'm sure this deals with like browser cookies and things like that but so if you want a named user license you just have to contact me Roger Dunn or Ben Peterson okay so here's the opening screen uh, we can create a new project it's got some templates it looks like. I could go get another template, but I honestly don't have one. I think this list will populate as I create and open projects. Uh, oh, up here in the upper right hand corner you can see my name, uh, the organization that I work for, a uh, URL, and I could sign out if I want to. So I think I'm just going to choose a blank project. And it wants me to name it right away. And this is probably unusual to a lot of you because we can work with a, an untitled document in ArcMap, but with with Pro we have to set up a project. Once I name this project, the folder will be named the same thing. So I'm going to say uh, test. So a new folder is going to be created called D Documents. Well, I still want that other uh, project folder, GGIS Projects. Okay, and then it's going to create a subfolder under that called test. You can store your ArcGIS projects in your documents folder. That's totally cool. Um, you can have a, a subfolder just for your mapping. All right, you can see at the top uh, ArcGIS Pro test catalog. And here I can start building maps. So let's say that I want to uh, get something off of PW4 server. So if I go into folders, all right, there's my test geodatabase. It looks like it sets up a a geodatabase, which is nice because if I'm going to do analysis and things like that, I want some place for it to go, especially if it's temporary, and I can go right into that database. Um, I do want a connection to PW4 server though, so how can I do that? Uh, up here, add folder. So I'm going to type backslash backslash PW4 server backslash SYS backslash GIS data backslash AV data now it wasn't doing any completion so is that okay okay alright 
Great, so there's a lot of a lot of data here. This is a metadata. Can I close that? Yeah, show hide the details panel. Okay. Um, what about a connection to soldier and a connection to knight? Uh, databases. Um, new database connection. I right clicked for that. This is a SQL server. The instance is in all capitals orum hyphen SQL backslash orum SQL. Soldier does use operating system authentication. The database is orum GIS. Uh, when do I get to name it? Okay, over here on the right it puts me in rename mode, so I'm going to call that soldier. Hey, come on. Soldier. Okay, I need a new database connection. Right click, new database connection. This is also SQL Server. It's ORM SQL backslash ORM SQL. This one uses database authentication though. And uh, GIS admin is the username. And I gotta remember the password. Hold on. Okay, just so you know, for future reference, I do keep all the usernames and passwords in a secured spreadsheet. And so if you've lost yours, I can uh, give it back to you without having to create a new one. It's not the ORM GIS database, it is the ORM EGDB database. Let's try that. Okay, and this is definitely called Knight. And I like there to be an underscore with the username you're connecting with. Because any one user can connect as multiple usernames to Knight, depending on their role. Okay, so I can browse inside of Soldier for data sets I have uh, permissions to see. I will say that this is a little, seems a little slower than ArcGIS Desktop. But it's the future. They keep improving this product. They keep improving ArcGIS Desktop too, but it has a, an end of life in like, uh, I think it's eight years. Okay, I can go up and go into night and see databases and stuff like that too. Okay, cool. So uh, let's take the flyover and right click it. Uh, I'll add to a new map. So the way that projects work in ArcGIS Pro, um, we used to call map documents MXDs, and they had the layers and stuff like that. But ArcGIS Pro has this concept of projects. You can have multiple maps, multiple layouts, all within one project. You can have a map that focuses on, you know, uh, city council. You can have a map that focuses on citizens. You can have a map inside a project that's for your boss. You know, maybe a few that are for you. Another map which is for your crew. Um, you know, all these print templates and things like that. So it's really exciting what uh, what you can do within a project. Uh, let's say that I don't want the topographic layer here. I'm going to actually remove it because I've I've got the wonderful flyover. Um, Let's see, I'm in a, it's called Explore. Interesting. Whoa, that went really fast. So I'm panning if I want to zoom. Looks like I hold down Shift and draw a rectangle. Okay. I've got some buttons over here. Of course, my full extent is there. So those are some basics of setting up your uh, your folder connections, your database connections, and uh, you know a, a really really basic map. I'm not going to go too into that because that's more on using ArcGIS Pro rather than installing it. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video and uh, are able to uh, stretch your legs in this new product.